Dude, old bud, gonna do some nib grinding today. Got a pen to do as a thank you for a viewer, a Mr. Nitro Squid 44. He's the one that suggested to Apple Boom Pens for me to do a top three. And as a result, my uh, channel grew quite a bit. So I uh, said, hey, you know, as a thank you, I wanna send you off a pen and I wanted to do a custom grind. So Why not get it on video? I'm gonna do that today. And then also I thought, well, so anyone else doesn't miss out, let's make it fair. I'll do an extra pen. So this is a Jinhao 159, uh, and I'm gonna give it the same grind, and we're gonna do a giveaway at the same time. So pretty cool. I'm gonna record how I do the nib, uh, so you can watch and maybe learn a little bit, and also just walk you through how I start off and then we'll give you the details at the end on how to win one of these pans with a custom grind. So first thing I'm gonna do on these two pans is just check the overall nib alignment. You wanna start off, you don't want the, the tines to be way out of whack, right? You want them to be lined up. So I'm gonna do that, just gonna grab the loop, check the alignment. The Jinhao checks out this one here. This is a little Bauer pen. Um, it's off just a touchy touch, so I'm just gonna take it and I'll you know just show you and just this one's uh, a little bit too high, so just give it a, you know, a little bit like that if I need to bring this one up a touch. And I'll just do that back and forth, check it on the loop until I think it's about right. Ideally, if you can take the, uh, if we can focus, if you can take the nib out and do it much better. This one, uh, I can't get it out, at least it's a little too tricky or I have to pull harder than I think I should and could possibly damage it. So everything's all aligned now on both pens. Next thing I'm gonna check is the gap. So on the slit here, when they put that little slit into the nib, gotta to check to make sure that gap is appropriate. I'm looking for 0 0.0015 inches or 1.5 thousandths of an inch. The way I'm gonna check that is this nice little feeler gauge set and lo and behold, there's the 1.5. So I wanna make sure that's correct first. So on the bower here, let's give this a go. I think this one's probably pretty good. It's just cause it, it does seem to have good flow. Yeah, that's about right. I'm happy with where that's at. Let's check the Jinhao. Put that in there. This one's a little bit tighter. So I'm gonna uh, give this one a little tweak, pop it out and that's actually What's cool with this one, if you don't like that pen, you can take that nib out and put it onto another pen that takes, say, a number six. Here's an example. I showed this pen a little while ago, the one pen many nibs concept. You can just pop that out, pop this on, line it up, fit it in, boom, there you go. So if you don't like that, but you wanna fit it into a different pen that takes a number six, away you go. It's one of the reasons I really like this uh, Osprey pens. I just did this review the other day because it comes with all these multiple nibs you can just buy right there. So that's, if you haven't watched that, check it out. I really like this whole concept, but let's get to showing you how I'm going to, wherever it is somewhere on the desk here, adjust the uh, the slit there on the nib. Okay, so here we go. If you can get the nib off, it's much easier. If you can't, you can just use those feeler gauges, use a larger one, say, uh, depending on it, maybe 2.5 thou, put it in and just give it a bit of a wiggle. I have another video on that. Um, the, the challenge with that is you can sometimes mess the tipping up. You can actually just bend that edge over a little bit. You can fix it afterwards, but if you can get the nib off, that's ideal. So you can see here, I'm just grabbing it and I'm just opening that up a little bit. Give it a five count or so. And looking at it there, if they have the white background, it helps so you can sort of see what you're doing. Okay, then I'll check it with the feeler gauge. I got that uh, slit adjusted, so now there's the 1.5 going in there. It just slides, again, you can't feel this, but it just slides a little bit better. It's kind of that perfect gap as well. Now, again, you actually might wanna do these in reverse order. Check the gap first, because when you do that, chances are 
the tines are going to get out a little bit. I looked at mine, it was pretty darn close, but I did give it just a quick little tweak. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to switch number one, number two up. So now that's set, I'm going to hit it with the stones. You're going to see the video. How I'm going to film this is I'm just going to uh, do the camera angles and grind it, and then I'll try to do a voiceover to talk about what I'm doing. We'll see how that goes. I haven't done that before, but stones I'm using, they're just wet stones. There'll be a 400, 1,000, that's a combo stone, then a 4,000, 8,000, then I'll come down, I'll use these uh, micro mesh pads here. There's a whole package I got, but 6, 8, and 12, uh, I might just need the 8 and the 12, but maybe have to do the 6 if I notice some issues. And then optionally, I also have some leather strops, so I, like, I do razors and knives as well, so if I really want to smooth it a bit, if I feel it needs it, I might use a leather strop. So here we go. Uh, watch what I do, and, you know, comments and all that, ask questions afterwards, and I'll give you the details on how you can win this pen with this nib, and you can put this nib in whatever pen you like. All right, so I'm set up with a 400 grit, 1000 grit whetstone double-sided. I put it on a little bowl to get a nice angle. Makes it easier for me to look at and get you a better camera angle as well. Just very short controlled strokes, and I'm going to go for it. just trying to remove uh, part of the tipping material just to get it from a ball to essentially being a square chisel end as well So just taking my time here again. I'm speeding it up to keep the footage a little bit shorter A little bit of pressure short strokes here. I am going vertical just to square off the front I like to just go one direction going up because otherwise it squeaks and the tines vibrate and chatter side to side same type of process Just trying to get this from round to essentially a chisel Gonna check it real quick. Got the line variation I want. This thing is really scratchy right now, but I got the basis of what I need to work with. Here's a quick view. You can see how scratchy that is. So now it's just stepping it up. Thousand grit stone, same process. You can see going very slow, short strokes, very controlled. Biggest thing, most important, is keeping everything parallel. So the top uh, and bottom of the nib, when I do it, I'm keeping it parallel to the surface of that stone. And then when I go vertical, making sure the pen is, you know, perpendicular to the surface of the stone, just keeping your geometry. So now I'm just doing a little bit of a rotation with it. I'm working on thinking about the pad where it's going to be writing on the paper. You can't just write with the block. You got to smooth it a bit. So again, very light pressure, thousand grit stone, just shaping it, not trying to remove a bunch of material, just breaking edges. So same thing on the sides of the nib as well, maybe three, four, five strokes, light pressure, flip it over, do the same thing as well, trying to keep things vertical, parallel, just checking all my angles to make sure I don't get way off into one area. And I'm just going to break those corners as well, just rolling it a little bit again, very mild pressure. So just taking your time with this stuff. And I'll start doing a few strokes, maybe some figure eights, ups and downs, and maybe I'll do a couple letters from the alphabet or a few words just to see how it goes. And again, just light pressure. I'm just trying to smooth it out because we want to write with this pen and have it be a very nice writing experience. Checking it now. So the line variation is reduced a bit because of that. We smoothed it out, right? But now I'm just going to check the flow and make sure it's the same, whether it's left to right or right to left, up or down. The stroke should all be the same. So now we're just stepping it up. I have a 4,000 grit stone. See how slow I go, nice and easy. Keeping the stone wet, checking my work, make sure I'm parallel and flat. I go vertical, make sure I'm 90 degrees. And then same process, now I'm at the 8,000 grit stone. So you get the idea, it's just like uh, sharpening a knife. You start off coarse, then you step it up, up and up and up, as far as you wanna go. Um, highest stone I got right now is an 8,000 grit that does good enough job of really just kind of polishing at that type of uh, grit as well. Yeah, and just breaking those corners a little bit, just smoothing it, polishing up all the work, and then we'll get in the micro mesh. All right, so both the nibs are ground finished off on the 8,000 stone. You could see just checking uh, the writing sample, if it's grabbing, hitting the corners a little bit, make sure I can go up and down and get in the line variation that I want. Uh, so now I'm just going to kind of smooth it off and polish it on the micro mesh. Starting out with the 8000 grit micro mesh pad, just reestablishing those same angles and lines I did with the stones just to get things going again. The nice thing with the pads, they have a little bit of a give to them which helps kind of round things out 
and make the grind a little bit smoother. Before the pads, I did use the uh, nail buffers from the dollar store. So just going through some figure eights, a quick brown fox, mango chutneys, things like that. Testing it on the paper, it's feeling much better already, much smoother, great flow. I'll test it with some writing. Of course, mango chutneys, great, it gets all the angles. Feeling good, and uh, let's get you close here. Ups and downs, lefts and rights. I want the flow and uh, thickness to be the same. So same process once again on the 12,000. This is really just polishing it. Uh, I feel how it was with the writing sample, and I target those areas. So what I'm gonna do here is this is just gonna open the tines just a little bit. So there's a little burr, a sharp corner. Um, between the two tines sort of on the tipping material on the inside so this helps kind of get rid of that as one of the final things i do i'm checking it on the pad of paper i'm very happy with how this feels even trying the reverse is not too bad printing writing here's a close-up it's tricky to do with the setup i got here as well you can see that writing pad there so it's not a square anymore it's got some roundness to it but definitely uh, will give us a nice line variation now here's the Jinhao 159, same process, exact same procedure on this nib as well. Feels really great. I really like this, nice and smooth. So it's, um, it's almost like a stub, like a cross between a cursive italic and a stub. Cursive italics are a little bit more crisp, so I, I just kind of do these for, I'm not sure exactly everyone's preference, but everyone likes a smooth writing nib, so uh, you get a little line variation with the two knot maximum. I can go more, as you can see when I first started off back here, you could see just how whisper thin those lines are, but that's when the tip of the nib is just like a block, it's a chisel, right? So um, here it's been smoothed and round a little bit more, just so it's a little bit more comfortable. And so now the profile and the nib, it comes up and it's just got a little more round to it as well, um, versus before when you get it, it comes up and it's just like that. And it's just, you get cool line variation, but you can catch on corners and stuff as well. So this just, I think it's pretty forgiving. I try to get it in case you're a high rider or you're very low. I want it to be comfortable for different hand positions as well. Of course, you gotta get it in the right sweet spot. If you're on the corners, it's not gonna work. But if you get the right spot, it should be a lovely little rider. So let's just wrap this up. Let's do the before and after. All right, so here's the before with the bower. Let's do the after and I'll do it down here too. Okay, let's go down to the bottom here. And then same thing with the 159. So getting you a little bit closer, you can see it's not extreme, but it does give a nice little difference in the line. And it's also a really nice little writer. And this is the one you guys are gonna be uh, trying to win with a comment. I'm gonna give you the details in just the moment so you can see those loops. You can see how they got that thinner stroke on there as well. Um, yeah, just to give it a nice little bit of flair. Here you go, getting a little bit closer as well on both of those pins. So. Hope you got something out of it. Again, disclaimer, um, you know, you probably shouldn't be doing this yourself unless you've practiced on some cheap pens. So these are relatively low cost. I would do this a bunch. And again, know what you're uh, capable of, what you're not capable of. 
and this seems like something way beyond what you should be doing, then just don't do it. So if you screw up a pen and blame me, <laughs> nice try. Let's get to the details. Let's wrap up this video and talk about the giveaways. The prize is this beautiful purple Jinhao 159 with a Doodlebud custom grind. I call this uh, the crowd pleaser. Uh, <laughs> a little line variation, but nice and smooth. To enter, simply hit subscribe if you haven't. And you, if you already have, thank you very much. Uh, leave a comment. The draw date will be 1010. Easy to remember. So that's October 10th, 2021. No cash value, nothing crazy like that. Just a pen. Let's uh, give it a looky loo. There we go. And uh, yeah, again, so it's got a number six. If you don't like the pen, you can just take the nib, chuck it in a pen you do enjoy. As always, Thank you for watching, and in this case, you gotta leave a comment and subscribe, so catch you next time.